Hello, beautiful people. How are you? Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am so happy that you are here today. Thank you for taking the time out to join me. Thank you for taking the time out to listen to me each and every day. Um, if it's your first time here, welcome. I hope that you find this channel very helpful. I hope that it inspires you. I hope that you feel empowered. I hope you feel encouraged. And more importantly, I hope that you subscribe. If you have not already done so, I need you right below this video to click that little red subscribe button and make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel because we are having some amazing discussions and there are some great topics being discussed here and I really don't want you to miss out. So make sure you subscribe and also share this channel with people that you love. I'm telling you, they're going to be blessed. So here we are at day 16 of our Taste for Truth Weight Loss Bible Study. Oh my goodness, we are breezing right through this. Um, and each and every day, I don't know about you, but I am learning a lot about myself. I think I'm learning more about myself than I am weight loss, but I'm really learning to embrace the word of God and how it plays into my holistic life, not just my physical life with my weight loss, but my spiritual life, my emotional well-being, my mental well-being. And so I hope that you are finding that out as well. So here we are, day 16, our title for today's reading, I Might As Well Eat. <laughs> okay, I uh, this is one of those, if I had a nickel for every time I said that, I would be rich right now. I might as well eat. So here is what we are going to chat about today. We are going to talk about that terrible word that starts with the letter T. You know what that is? Temptation. Say it with me. Temptation. We are going to deal with temptation. And as it relates to our food choices and our overall health. And so I want to... Um, I want to start off with a quote that I read, and this is what the quote said. It said, if we are actively doing what's right, the devil can't get us to do what's wrong. Did you hear that? If we are actively doing what is right, the devil can't get us to do what is wrong. And that is temptation. Temptation is when we are lured into doing what is not right. Lured into doing what we know is not going to benefit us. But because we have become so habitual at doing the wrong thing, we try to convince ourselves that it's the right thing. And I don't know about you, but I don't know how many times I have looked at food and said this. And I know you have to. Oh my God, that looks so tempting. If you say, oh my God, that looks so tempting, what is happening is your subconscious is tempting you and enticing you. And eventually, if you entertain the thought long enough, it will show up in your conscience and it will wound you. Let me say that again. We look at food and we make this statement. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. That looks so tempting. That is our subconscious speaking. And if we entertain that thought long enough, it will show up in our consciousness and eventually it will wound us. And how will it wound us? It will cause us to feel guilt and shame and condemnation. And I don't know about you, but those are things that I am so tired of feeling as it relates to my overall health. And so how temptation starts is we get lured in by our sight first. We see a thing. We see it. Then we take what we see with our eyes and then we rehearse it in our minds, right? We try to play out all the scenarios. Well, if I eat this, what will happen? If I don't eat this, what will happen? And we go back and forth, back and forth until we convince ourselves or justify to ourselves why we should. And so once it, once we see it 
then it goes into our mind, then it, it, it manifests in our actions. Eventually, the thing that looked tempting, that we thought was tempting, has now tempted us. And we are engaging in unhealthy habits, whether they're good. Sometimes we engage in things that are good. But most times when we're tempted, we're not tempted to do good. We're tempted to do bad. And guess what happens? When that temptation, when we continue to entertain it, it becomes a bad habit. And bad habits usually end up in death. And when I say death, I'm not talking about physical death, but I'm talking about a spiritual death an emotional death, a mental death, it ends up causing things in our life to begin to die because we start spiraling down this, um, this rabbit hole that we can't seem to dig ourselves out of. And so um, what happens is our subconscious says, I might as well. And then we end up with a wounded conscience because we did. So the subconscious says, well, I might as well eat that. I might as well do this. I might as well. It's like we constantly try to convince ourselves on why we need to do something that we know that we're going to regret later. And so I want to talk about, there's a scripture in Matthew chapter four, Matthew chapter four, starting at verse one through 10. And it is a story where Jesus himself, see, I need you to get this because when we're being renewed, when our minds are being renewed by the word of God, God Listen, he knows, he knows Jesus went through it. Like he endured everything, everything that we're feeling in this moment, everything that we have felt, everything that we're going to feel, he's endured it, but he has solutions, which tells me if Jesus endured it and overcame, we can endure and overcome also. So there is no excuse. So here we are at Matthew chapter four, verse one through 10. Jesus has found himself after being baptized in the wilderness and the devil shows up and attempts to tempt him in several different ways. And I want to point them out to you quickly. Matthew 4, 1 through 10, New Living Translation says this. Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted there by the devil. Forty days and forty nights he fasted and became very hungry. During that time, the devil came to him and said, If you are the son of God, tell these stones to turn into bread. But Jesus told him, no, the scripture says, the word of God says, people do, do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city of Jerusalem, to the highest point of the temple. And he said, if you are the son of God, jump off. For the scripture says, he will order his angels to protect you and they will hold you up with their hands so you won't even hurt your foot on a stone. But Jesus said, the scripture also says, you shall not test the Lord your God. Next, the devil took him to the peak of a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. He said, I will give it all to you if you will kneel down and worship me. And this is what Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan, get out of here, Satan. For the scripture says you must worship the Lord, your God and serve only him. Here are the three temptations that Jesus faced that day in the wilderness that we face each and every day when it comes to food. The first one was a physical temptation in verses three and four. He was trying to get him to eat, even though he was on a fast. So he was physically tempting him. He was trying to remind him, oh my God, you've been out here 40 days and 40 nights. Surely you are starving. Surely you are hungry. And guess what? Jesus came back. He had renewed his mind with the word. So as a result, he was able to repeat the word when the temptation came. Did you hear that? When we renew our minds with the word of God, when the temptation comes, we can repeat what we have been renewing our minds with. You can't fight the enemy if your weapon is not ready. Or if you don't have a weapon at all, the only way you win this battle over temptation, which comes from the devil, is with the word of God. That is your sword. That is your weapon. 
The second temptation was an emotional temptation. He started questioning in verses five through seven. He took him to the holy city and he says, if you're the son of God, jump off. Surely his angels will protect you. He was making it seem like God didn't love him. So God was just going to let him fall off the mountain and die. Listen. The enemy will do that with you too. He'll try to tempt you with your emotions. Well, you know what? You're always going to be like this. Nobody loves you anyway. Nobody's going to like you anyway. God doesn't love you. You don't love you. People don't love you. And it is a lie. And automatically, automatically, Jesus responded with the word of God. You see where I'm going with this? That's why we have to not only read the word, but meditate on the word chew on the word so that when the time comes we can regurgitate the word which means we can give the word back to the enemy and the last one was a control temptation verses 8 through um 10 he said you know i'm gonna here i'm gonna take you up to this mountain i'm gonna show you all these kingdoms and and if you'll worship me i'll give this all to you that's what food does. It tries to get us to bow down to it. It tries to get us to gain control. It wants to control us or make us feel like we're in control and we're not. Oh, you can, you, you might as well eat it. You can handle it. You only going to eat one. I, go ahead and eat it. It's not such a big deal. Listen, if we were able to control our temptations, we wouldn't be doing this 30 day weight loss Bible study. We wouldn't be suffering when it comes to our health. We wouldn't constantly be overweight. We wouldn't be fluctuating in weight, going up, going down, going up, going down. We wouldn't if we were in control. And the reality is, is that we're not. But how did God, how did Christ respond to the enemy with the word of God? That is why we have to renew our mind with the word of God. That is going to be our weapon of warfare. If we're going to win this fight, and I think I said this a couple of videos back, this battle that we are fighting with our flesh is spiritual. Your flesh does not want to surrender. Your flesh doesn't want to see you well. It doesn't. So we have to feed our soul so our soul becomes stronger than our flesh. And when the flesh tries to tempt us, we have everything we need to fight against it. So how do we overcome temptation? First thing is we humble ourselves. We get humble. We realize that we need something greater to help us through this. The second thing is we pray and we seek God's wisdom. And the third thing is we pursue God in his word. And then once we pursue God in his word, we start living what we're learning. It, and I'm talking to myself right now. It doesn't work. If you don't use it, it works. If you work it, it works. If you work it, I want to end with this scripture, James chapter four, verse seven through 10, humble yourselves before God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands. You sinners purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and a deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. But if you humble yourselves before the Lord, he will lift you up in honor. Did you hear that? We are in a battle between our flesh and our spirit, between right and wrong. And our attention and our affections cannot be divided. We have to to take a position. We're either going to trust God with this um, weight loss and this health journey that we're on, mind, body, and spirit, or we're going to go and try to do it on our own. And if you trust God, then you have to do it God's way. We have to do it God's way. That's the only way we're going to overcome. That's the only way we're going to overcome the temptations. That's the only way we're going to get in a position of success when it comes to our health is we have to trust God and we have to trust his process and we have to live by what we are reading. So I want to hear your thoughts right below the video. Share your comments, share your thoughts with me. How has this um, helped you today? What did you learn from today's reading? And remember, be patient with yourself. It's a process, but you can, you will you must overcome. Have an amazing day. Talk to you soon.